Can you hear the wind blowing in the background as I'm recording this episode? You know, that wind reminds me of our topic this month a little bit. This month, we're talking about the perils of drifting based on the book or pieces of the book, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. By the way, I have an affiliate link down in the show notes for that book. But the wind makes me feel a little adrift, like a boat that's tied to the pier, but or to the dock, but only in one place. And so it's drifting a little bit. And so hopefully that, that sound of the wind doesn't interrupt us. But hey, friends, welcome back to the podcast. We are at episode 152. And we're continuing this conversation about drifting, the perils of drifting and drifting in 3D. We started it on the 6th, talking about the perils of drifting and what does that mean? And then I've been breaking it down into what I call 3D drifting, distractions, discontentment, and doubt. And this week we're talking about discontentment. And you know, there is so much noise in the world about not being satisfied. And you know, you can't get no satisfaction, right? Isn't that what Mick Jagger sings? But that we shouldn't satisfy, settle and we shouldn't be satisfied. We should we should always want to do better and to do more. And, you know, that is true, that we want to create a new legacy for our families, that in our businesses, we want to serve people through our products, through our services that enhance their life, that allow them to experience a different kind of coaching in my case, or a different kind of health and wellness, if you have a business like that, or a different kind of event as one of my clients is part of her business is event planning. And yes, we should always want to be doing better. And we should always be asking ourselves at the end of a client engagement or event or what have you, like, what can I do more, better or different? There is a fine line, friends, where we can easily drift over into dissatisfaction, discontentment, lack of gratitude, and start to drive and strive again. And what's so fascinating about drifting is that it is exactly the enemy's tool for getting us off course. So let's review a little bit. I got a lot of scripture for you this week. We're going to be spending uh, camping out a, a lot in Hosea and talking about his wife, Gomer, who was never satisfied, right? And so I've got some great scripture. As always, remember that in the show notes, I have a ton of links for you. I have the scriptures that we talk about. I have the link to my four keys tool, which we're going to talk a little bit about today as well. And I also have a link to my Charles Stanley Bible that I love to use, a link to my book, other resources. So don't miss that. That is always there for you. So let's review, if you're watching this on YouTube, hey, by the way, did you know this is on YouTube? You can watch it. You could see me like live and in the flesh. But did you know that drifting, according to the book, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, that drifting is the process through which the devil controls the souls of mankind. And this is accomplished through lack of purpose, confusing ideas, excess, and most namely fear. And as we've been talking about these three Ds of drifting, this week we're talking about discontentment. So what is discontentment? Well, really in a nutshell, discontentment is being unsatisfied. It's being unsatisfied with our mission, with our project, our, our progress, our material possessions, our house, our car, our life. And while social media can be an amazing way to keep in touch with people and to share about your business, it is insidious for making us feel discontent, right? Because we see everyone's highlight reels and everyone's quote unquote perfect life. And then we're discontent with us. Why can't my husband be like that? Why can't my kids like be like that? Why can't we go have fun like those people? Why can't we be on vacation? Why can't my business have those results, right? On and on and on. But at the core of discontentment is two things, pride and lack of gratitude. So yes, celebrate your wins. Yes, celebrate your progress. Celebrate your accomplishments. And remember 
that all of those things come from God. They are his gifts to us. Yes, I know you did work for them, but who gave you the ample body and the equipped mind and who qualified you to do that work and who put you and positioned you in those situations and made those connections? It was the Lord. Ultimately, it was the Lord. And, you know, discontentment can result from us looking at the next shiny thing or the next squirrel moment. I talked about that in my carousel and, and my, in my blogs recently about being, um, like squirrel mentality. So I have a confession to make. I have not seen the movie up <laughs> the Pixar movie up. I've not seen. However, what I do recall <laughs> from the trailers was the dog whose name was Doug and him being distracted by squirrels, right? Because we can be discontent. We can dis be discontent with that last accomplishment. And we can be discontent with that last er thing that we earned or the last promotion or whatever. So again, we have to be careful that we're not feeding on our self-reliance. And ultimately, that we're not allowing pride to get in our way. We've got to be grateful. We've got to be practicing gratitude. Right. So last week or a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you that I found this really amazing blog on the spiritual strongholds on gotquestions.org. By the way, the link is in the show notes and the biblical view of strongholds. And remember, we talked about strongholds were like fortresses and that there are pieces of our life, our pride, our idolatry, etc., that the enemy uses against us to do what? To get us drifting to put up a wall around us. And these strongholds can very quickly take over if we are not careful to be in the word and be praying. We're always looking for the next thing because the stronghold of pride says, oh, I did that, now let me do more, right? And it is the noise of the world that gets us. So one of the things that this talks about is that we are in living in the castle of passion. And what is that? Well, the castle of passion, as described in this blog, is lust, pleasure, greed. It's being discontent and grumbling. So I'm going to read you from Exodus 16, verses 1 through 9, about some grumbling people. The Lord still love them, but about some grumbling people. It's, it's, uh, it's quite fascinating. So here we go. And they journeyed from Elam. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, let me put my actor hat on and my damsel in distress. Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to the full, you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people should go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. Because, right, they weren't paying attention to the fact he had already done that. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, This shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning bread to the full for the Lord hears your complaints, which you make against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but the Lord. So this goes on to talk about manna and the very instruction that everyone should gather according to their need, that if they gathered too much because they were greedy or gluttonous, that it would spoil and be full of maggots. And if you gathered too little, they would starve, right? Maybe this sounds familiar to you because if we skip ahead to Matthew 6, verse 11, where Jesus is teaching us how to pray, 
He says, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. It has been said that if we are anxious, we're looking too far ahead. And if we're feeling depressed, that we're looking too far backward. Daily bread, being present in the moment and content with what is happening in the moment. So this daily bread is so important because God is giving you what you need in your business right here, right now, today. He has positioned you for today. And sometimes while it is great to have vision and to set goals, we are looking too far ahead and therefore discontent and overlooking what's happening in the moment. When I got married, I remember a friend of mine said at the moment that the priest says, I now pronounce you man and wife, you kiss your bride and you have church kiss, right? For those of you who are fans of the movie Wedding Singer, it's church, church tongue, that you should turn around hand in hand with your husband and stop for a second and take a deep breath and look at the crowd that has gathered to celebrate you. Be present in that moment. Another friend of mine told me the same thing when my oldest daughter, Haley, graduated high school in 2015, to look around the arena and be present in the moment. And I did the same thing when my daughter Cameron graduated from college earlier in May. I stopped and looked around at the theater that we were in, right? Because we do not stop to think about being content in what we have today. Friends, I am not telling you not to set goals. I am not telling you not to take action. I am not telling you to embrace the vision the Lord has given you. What I am telling you is that you can be grateful for where you are and excited and curious about where he's taking you. But if we spend time in discontent, we're just going to be drifting off course. And that's exactly where the enemy wants us. So let's look at someone who was discontent in the book of Hosea. So Hosea is instructed by the Lord to marry a woman, Gomer, who is never satisfied, never satisfied. And this, by the way, does not hearken, does it not hearken back to the Israelites in the wilderness? Like never satisfied, right? So in, um, Hosea, we're going to go there, chapter 2, verses 14 through 20. I'm not going to read this to you, but um, in my Charles Stanley Life Principles Bible, it has an example here, and it says, what did she want? And he says, it's difficult to understand a woman like Gomer. The prophet Hosea loved her faithfully, provided for her consistently, and invited her to enjoy a safe and fulfilling relationship with him. But instead, what did she do? She sought more. She sought out lovers. What was her problem? What did she want? It was never enough. She was drifting in discontentment. She was looking for someone to satisfy her needs her way versus God's way. And how often in your business do you find yourself looking at what you've accomplished or the progress and you're like, that's great, but that's not what I wanted. Or I wish it were bigger. Or I wish it were more. Or I wish I had more clients, right? This is a definition of arrogance. This is the definition of that castle of passion, like this blog talked about. And this same pride corrupted Gomer's heart. And that threatens to lead, to, to lead us away from our first love, the Lord, as well. And that's what happens when we seek something other than him to meet our deep longings. What are some of those things that we seek? A bigger house, a better job a bigger business, more wealth, more stuff, um, beauty, intelligence, etc. But God says to us, just as he said to Hosea, behold, I will allure her and will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her because only he can truly satisfy the hunger in our heart. This goes on um, in Hosea 19 and 20 that we really need to understand that the ways of God 
are our pathway to success. I know the world is loud and noisy. It's why I talk about tuning out the world and tuning into God's truth and turning up focus because the world is noisy. The world's definition of achievement and success is about wealth and status and power. But the Lord's definition of success which by the way, if you haven't already gotten my book, Pursuing Success God's Way, that's exactly what it's about. His definition is our obedience. His definition is how we build our relationship with him. And when we submit to him fully, we share in his triumph. So let me go one more place in Hosea, and that is Hosea 4.10. And this is what this says. For they shall eat, but not have enough. They shall commit harlotry, but not increase because they have ceased obeying the Lord. And this is what Dr. Charles Stanley says here. The Israelites sought Canaanite deities because they were supposed to bring fertility and prosperity. And how often are we seeking things, whether we want to call them idols or not, that will bring us power and wealth and all of those things? However, in doing so, they were forsaking God who truly supplied all their needs. They were prideful and idolatrous in trying to fulfill their own needs. And guess what? It ended in disaster after disaster. When we obey the Lord, he assumes full responsibility for everything we need. But when we disobey him, anything that we acquire will turn to ashes. It has been said that what we acquire outside of God's will, we will have to maintain outside of his will. If you have not um, heard my story, I've been sharing that on a number of podcasts lately, and I'll link a few of those guest spots below so you can you know, really hear the background. I also talk about it in my book, but that's exactly what I was doing was acquiring wealth and status and promotion and stuff outside of his will. I didn't know that at the time until I gave my life to Christ and he opened my eyes to it in October, 2014. But all of those things that I was trying to maintain that I was striving and driving and trying to achieve faded, faded. And they began to fade long before I found the Lord. Like he was showing me. He will move mountains to show you his will. So we've got to be careful in this discontentment, friends. We've got to be careful not to allow that clamoring for more or better or to never settle. Be the the earworm and the loop in our heads that gets us drifting because the enemy wants nothing more than to have you drifting, my sweet sister. Because when you're drifting, you're distracted by everything else but the assignment that God has given you. And he knows, the enemy knows how powerful you are when you are walking in the center of God's will and doing what he's called you to do in your business. So listen, before we finish, the only way through uh, around this is through it. We we've, we've all are going to have discontentment. I was having it the other day. I'm just being vulnerable with you. And that's the time to come back to that four keys for redefining hustle and pursuing success God's way. The link is in the show notes if you haven't grabbed it already so that we can embrace how he defines and directs us. And then we can put discipline around that. So we put on our blinders and we move forward in what he's given us to do. And we're not drifting in discontentment. Friends, the discontentment is going to come. There's just no way around that. But leaning into him and into his word and being reminded of being present in the moment and grateful in the moment. Yes, looking ahead with excitement, but being present where you are. That is the key here, friends. And those four keys will help you do that. And you heard at the beginning of the podcast, if you struggle in this area or with clarity or tuning out the world, tuning into God's truth and turning up focus, I would love to chat with you about my coaching get on my calendar for a discovery call. My coaching is not open right now, but I'm having those conversations now because I'm filling spots starting in August. I can't wait to hear what you think about this. If this spoke to you, screenshot it, share it, go find me on Voxer and let's have a conversation there. But until next time, I pray for and encourage you to tune out the world, tune into God's truth and turn up focus so that you can walk out his assignment with clarity, serenity, and fulfillment. I'll see you on the next episode.